Uh, as I said, I'm Richard Bevan. I'm the non-exec chair of uh, Narria Metals. I'm filling in today for uh, Gavin England, our MD, who ironically lives in the Clare Valley, uh, but is on site uh, in Canada. So, um, and just for full disclosure, I'm also a non-exec chair on TG Metals, uh, and David Self is pre uh, presenting a little later in this session. Um, so a little bit about Narria. Narria listed last year uh, on a set of exploration assets sort of in the nickel and rare earth space with uh, projects in Western Australia and uh, here in um, South Australia. Um, recently we acquired a, a set of uh, lithium projects in Canada, in Ontario and Quebec, which I'll really, I'll talk to you a little bit about today. Um, and we also have some other uh, acquired, uh, uh, just exercise an option on a uh, another uh, sort of carbonatite target in uh, southern Western Australia. And there's a little bit of interest in those sorts of projects uh, if you follow WA1 um, in the market. So I guess the Canadian acquisition, uh, we acquired this, these five projects. It's about 125 square metres of, of tenure uh, across five sites. Um, very early stage, all have uh, visible pegmatites, uh, but none have been sampled, uh, which is why Gavin's on the ground there at the moment. Uh, we did a deal that was a reasonably soft deal with a sort of share-only acquisition up front with some performance hurdles if the projects uh, proved to be successful. And I guess the question, you know, is really, there's been a lot of uh, Australian companies head to Canada and, and why is that? Um, if you look at the search space, you know, that superior craton that runs throughout Quebec and Ontario is probably twice the size of the Yilgarn and Pilbara cratons in uh, Australia. So it's a large search, search space. It's been historically pretty underexplored. Um, it is close to some uh, infrastructure. There are three uh, gigafactories, battery factories uh, that have been approved for uh, development in Ontario and Quebec and a number in the, that northern uh, American, northern US. So there's lots of infrastructure, there's lots of interest and lots of activity uh, on the ground. And I think the other good thing about um, lithium exploration for junior explorers is that it's reasonably uh, cost effective. Especially uh, in uh, Canada, there's a very low weathering profile. A lot of these uh, uh, pegmatites outcrop. And so in terms of getting in and sampling and seeing if it's mineralised or not uh, is, is a pretty uh, cost effective exercise. So these new projects, they, as I said, they all have uh, outcropping pegmatites. They're all adjacent to known lithium uh, mineralisation. There's a number of companies, both AXX and TSX listed, that have got lithium resources uh, in the area. So, you know, we're quite hopeful we can get on the ground and do that. Gavin England is, uh, is over there at the moment. He'll, uh, he's visited uh, two of the projects, Hailstone and Pontax East, and he'll, uh, sorry, and Eads, and he's at Pontax East uh, today. And we're hoping that all those samples will be wrapped up by the end of the week. So we should have some indication of uh, if we're in the right spot or not, uh, sort of in the next three or four weeks. The other project that uh, we've got that we'll continue on with, this is the Car Carbonatite project called Rocky Gully in Western Australia. Once again, it's a project that we optioned up about 15 months ago, a uh, fairly low cost option, has allowed us to do some extended due diligence. Um, there is some historical uh, exploration at this project, so sort of some drill results that are sort of 32 metres at uh, about 1500 ppm total rare earth with some high grade intercepts in there that are worth following up. We've brought all the data together, we've also run a uh, mag survey and come up with a great magnetic anomaly that we've uh, been successful in attracting WA government uh, co-funding. So that's all slated to be uh, sort of drilled in the first quarter of next year. Um, and as I said, you know, the uh, WA resources had some joy with a similar sort of profile uh, gravity anomaly up in um, the, the West Arantra in Western Australia. So in summary, um, Narry Metals, it's got a, a tight cap structure you know, 65 million shares on issue. We've got about 1.1 million in the bank at the end of June, and we've subsequently raised another 1.4 on that, thanks to uh, sort of the directors and shareholders and also Morgans in Perth, and I saw a few Morgans guys here, so that's great. Um, so we're well funded to get this done and then fire another shot down at the Rocky Gully. And I think the fact that you've got a tight capital structure really does provide that leverage that uh, there's some upside, and, and probably lithium even though the lithium is off a little bit, it's probably the one bit of the market too, as well as rare earths, that uh, we're still getting some joy for exploration and some reward. 
So I'd love to have a chat to you more about the project if anyone would like and encourage you to download it from the QR code or um, from the website. So thanks very much for your attention. So everybody knows there's no such thing as a free lunch and I hope you've all been taking notes because we're actually going to have a bit of an interactive audience Q&A after each presenter. So um, did ever, anyone have any uh, questions for Richard that you wanted to just scream out? Richard, um, come over to you now. Thanks for being here. Uh, how's access in James Bay at the moment, post the fires and, and everything? Yeah. You have full, full access to your ground? Yeah, so I guess it varies project to project, but we're, we are definitely, those fires have passed through. Um, so uh, the access is pretty good by some of it's by helicopter. In, in some ways, unfortunately, the fires made a, um, has been a positive in the sense of clearing some undergrowth. So some of these, when you're doing some of that mapping, uh, it's made things a bit easier. Um, there's a few windows where you can't fly choppers around the moose season because people are shooting moose. Uh, and uh, trying to escape bears, um, and it was interesting. I got a, a photo from Gavin today with a big bear scat. Um, uh, just to <laughs> shit, Greg. Um, so yeah, but but in general, there's there's plenty of infrastructure. There's lots of activity up there, um, and we've engaged some consultants, CSA, which are now ERM up there to assist us. Uh, get in there, and I think there's still plenty of opportunity, especially in the Northwest Territories and Northwest Ontario, you know, for greenfield exploration. James Bay has been a real focus and a hub, but there's plenty of other opportunity out there. So, thanks, Nick.